welcome back to the essential oil Erin here we are not making a cold process of this video <laughs> we are going to try out something new today I'm going to be making an emulsified sugar scrub for the first time I have not made a sugar scrub I have not made any sort of scrub before but we're gonna give it a go you can see all this stuff that I have ready to go um, I just washed a bunch of my big glass containers so that I can make all of this. So they're currently drying. So I thought I would go on and show everyone what is going to go into the scrub. So there's a lot to this. <laughs> so first we've got some stearic, stearic acid <laughs> wax. If I can talk, you'll have to bear with me. It's Friday. It's 646 and I just got off of work not too long ago and I'm pretty tired and ready to get into some soap making and and other making things. I'm in a mood you guys. <laughs> so we've got stearic acid. We've also got phenonip. Now this is a preservative. Anyone familiar with my soaps will know I do not add preservatives or any sort of filler or anything like that to my soaps. However, with an emulsified sugar scrub, you must use a preservative because you are combining oil with water. And that is just a breeding ground for bacteria. They love that. You can get mold in as soon as like four days. It's really crazy. And not to mention, if even if you're not doing an emulsified sugar scrub, if you're making anything that could possibly come into contact with water, such as a regular scrub or anything like that, you want to add a preservative because if the customer or yourself introduces water into this waterless product that also has oil in it, they or you are going to get mold and it's gonna be a bad time. So that's what this is for. It uses very little. We've also got some sweet almond oil. This is going to be our main source of oil in this sugar scrub. We've also got some natural Castile soap. This is liquid soap. So, I haven't actually used their liquid soap base before. It doesn't really have a smell. It just sort of smells like plain liquid soap. But Castile soaps mean Castile soap <laughs> means it's made exclusively with olive oil. There is no other sort of oil in this liquid soap base. Now we've also got mango butter. This stuff, I've never used this before, so I'm pretty excited. It is, it's pretty hard right now, but from my understanding, it melts when it comes into contact with your skin. So, about the same as coconut oil, I would say. It's, it's solid at room temperature, but when you introduce it to just a little bit of heat, a little bit of warmth, and as you can see, I can sort of smush, smush this back together already. So... Mango butter is supposedly really, really, really good for your skin. And let's see. I've got the sugar, of course. This is four pounds. I'm going to be using anywhere between 22 and 28 ounces, I believe. The amount of sugar that you add to your sugar scrubs is really a personal preference depending on how thick and how granular you want it to be. Now, some people actually do salt scrubs instead of sugar scrubs, and that's totally fine. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't have to be sugar, but I opted for sugar because if you use salt in a scrub, if yourself or your customer has any sort of nicks or scratches or razor burn from shaving like on their legs or anything like that, they, it could potentially not feel very good when, when that salt gets onto that wound. So sugar I thought would be the better way to go. We've also got some yellow beeswax. This came from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I would have preferred to have had some local beeswax, but I couldn't find any soon enough to be able to make this when I needed to. 
We've also got some emulsifying wax. And this is going to help the water and the oil really bind together so that they don't separate. And we've also got pumpkin spice fragrance oil. Yes, it is that time. <laughs> I've already seen fall and Halloween stuff in stores. I actually went to Cracker Barrel yesterday with my husband and a couple of friends, and they've already got Christmas stuff in their store, y'all. But this fragrance oil smells so good. It smells like I just opened up a little can of pumpkin spice. I mean, this is amazing. Now, with soap makers and things like that, we're generally a season ahead. Because most of the time, especially with cold processed soaps, there's that curing period. So you have to be a little bit ahead of the game so that when it is time for that product to hit the market, it is ready. If I were to wait until fall to make a pumpkin themed soap or whatever, specifically a soap, it's not going to be ready in time. It'll be closer to Christmas by the time that it's ready and then... I've got myself into a little bit of a, a situation there. Now, I've also got the dro a dropper here, and that's going to be for getting out the, the fragrance oil and the Fina Nip. And I've also got some little containers. These are just little white plastic containers that I got off of Amazon. They're two-ounce containers, and they come with this little removable seal. So that just pops off. You can just pop it right back in there, put the top on, and there you have it. So, yeah, I'm really excited. And you may be asking yourself, why an emulsified sugar scrub for my very first scrub? Emulsified sugar scrubs are, or emulsified scrubs as a whole, are generally more complicated to make because when you're doing a regular scrub, for example, you're basically just adding sugar or salt or what have you, whatever your exfoliant is, to a carrier oil. And that's pretty much it. You mix it all together, boom, there you have a scrub. It's very easy, very simple, and it does the job and it does it well. But... Regular scrubs are not that great for shipping because it's not all emulsified and in a more solid form like a lotion. So they will have a tendency to leak and things like that. I don't want that. I'm actually sending these to a friend. She requested that I make them for her. So I don't want there to be any leakage. This little top seal part to these bottles or these jars will help a little bit as far as leakage, but they're not gonna do much. Oil is gonna seep through the, tr the threads and the top and everything and come out. So that's why I am doing emulsified scrubs. If I were to be selling these locally at a store or something like that, then sure, I would do a regular scrub, but this is gonna be the way to go. And with this particular scrub, I'm going to be using a recipe from Brambleberry this scrub is more like a soap, a lotion, and a scrub all in one. So, <laughs> kind of hitting a bunch of areas all at once. So, I'm going to go and check and make sure that all of my dishes are dry. And I'm going to jump right into the making of these scrubs. Alright, so I rearranged a little bit to give us a brand new viewing angle <laughs> here at the Essential Owl. Can I just talk about how much... I love this new tripod because I never would have been able to give you all this view with that other tiny tripod that I was using, the one that I really didn't like. <laughs> it always was dropping my phone and falling over and it was just not a very good tripod, but this new one, I'm excited. And if, if this video ends up looking okay from this angle, then I am definitely going to have to do a couple of soap videos from this angle. I think it's much more interesting to be able to see them from above so that you can see everything that happens in here. And I think it will also make pores a little bit better to watch. So we will have to see. Now, I've got my big 
glass container on the scale and it's already teared out to zero. I have my iPad over here out of the way but open so that I can see the measurements that I need to be using. Hopefully this doesn't turn into my clay mask situation where I end up with way too much but if I do then you know I guess I'll just I'll just have to use all this wonderful sugar scrub myself. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started, shall we? First, I'm going to be putting in the sweet almond oil, and I need 1.9 ounces. There we go. 1.9 ounces. That came just in time because I also need it for soap. Now, I also need... 0.6 ounces of this stearic acid. So let's very slowly. This is a whole ounce, so I'm not going to need the whole bag, but most of it. Point 0.4, point 0.5. There we go, 0. 0.6. Okay, I'm also going to need to open this emulsifying wax. And we're going to tear our scale back to zero. If I could ever get this bag open. And for anyone curious, I am using gloves throughout this entire process except to open this bag because I can't get a good grip on it. But I am using gloves. There is nothing in this sugar scrub that is going to be harmful if I touch it with my bare hands. But because it's not for personal or family use, it is going to a friend. I, I just feel better about handling with gloves on because just for sanitary reasons, I wouldn't necessarily balk at a friend making a product like this barehanded as long as I was aware that they do things correctly, they sterilize all their stuff, they wash their hands, all that stuff, but it just makes me feel better about it. All right, so we need 1.2 ounces of this emulsifying wax. There we go, right on the money. 1.2 ounces. And we also need to tear into our beeswax. Now, this particular recipe is not vegan friendly because it has the beeswax in it. If you wanted to make a vegan friendly version of an emulsified scrub, you would just need to find a replacement for the beeswax. You could probably, I don't wanna make any assumptions as to what you could substitute In for your beeswax but I'm sure that there are plenty of options out there okay so we need 0.7 ounces of this there we go uh oh get back into their little pellet now, I bought 16 ounces of this e-wax and of the beeswax, so I have a whole lot of it left over. <laughs> but now, our next step is to microwave all of this for about a minute to two minutes. Please ignore my chipped nail polish. I have plans to redo it later. But we need to microwave this, get it all good and completely melted, 
and we'll move on to our next step. All right, while that is in the microwave, you'll probably hear the beep in the background soon. I'm going to go on to the next step. And this smaller container, I actually didn't need a container this big, but this was the, it was just the first one that I grabbed. It's, it's on the smaller side, so I thought I would run with it. So we are now going to add our liquid soap base, this Castile soap. We need three ounces of this. There we go. And we also have some distilled water in this freshly washed jar here. So we need three ounces of that as well. There we go. And I just heard that microwave go off. So I'm going to set this off to the side. Actually, no, I need to microwave this for a couple, for about a minute or so. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so we've got everything warm. This big bowl here is all of our waxes and oils together. So everything's good and melted and clear. So that is great. We've also got the soap and water over here. Next, we are going to add our mango butter. Now, mango butter is a lot like cocoa butter in that you have to temper it. So you need to melt it slowly. You don't want to microwave this stuff because it can turn gritty on you and that's a really unpleasant feeling. So I'm just going to attempt to break off chunks of this and add it to our oils here until we get an ounce. And then I'm just gonna stir it until it's all good and melted together. You can see even through the gloves, I hope you can see, you can see that it is melting on my hand. So it does melt very well, very fast. I do recommend using, <laughs> being smarter than me and using a knife or something to cut your chunks off because this is going to be a process. of our mango butter in there. I'm just going to stir this for a few seconds and make sure that that mango butter really melts and there's no little chunks left. We want it to be good and incorporated. And if you're like me and you've never used mango butter before, you may be asking yourself, what does mango butter smell like? It doesn't really smell like anything. I really kind of expected it to have a sweet smell or something because it's made from mangoes. At the very least, I expected a slightly fruity smell. Nope, not really. It just, it smells like really nothing. I don't really get much of a scent at all off of this mango butter. Now we're almost completely melted in. There's just a couple of little 
chunks floating around in there. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna grab my heat gun. It is going to be needed. All right, that looks good to me. I need to replace the glove that I lost because it was covered in mango butter. I'm trying to stay relatively clean today. Ha ha ha. All right, so now is the part where we are going to add our liquid soap base and our water. And this supposedly happens very fast. It should almost immediately start to turn white and start to foam and it did. Look at that, how cool. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give this a good little scrape here to make sure I'm getting out as much of that as I can. So you can see it's a little bit foamy. It's starting to emulsify. So now is the time to break out the good old stick blender. So I'm just going to give this a couple of quick bursts. All right, that looks good to me. Look how white that turned. I'm kind of surprised that it turned so very white. So I'm just gonna scrape off as much of this as I can off of my stick blender. And now, unfortunately, the next step is to wait. <laughs> and actually, before I say that, I'm going to take the temperature of this emulsified mixture and actually at this point if you wanted to actually not quite at this point but if you wanted to add your fragrance and your let's see how do I want to put that if you want to wait and add your fragrance and your preservative at this point you totally could and you could use this as an in shower scrub slash not scrub soap slash lotion you could totally do that because I mean that's a super super duper creamy texture you don't have to add scrub to this but please if you make this, even if it's only for yourself, please use a preservative. They are not all bad for you. Phenonip is totally fine to use. Please do some research on what preservative you think would work best for you. But please use a preservative because the stuff will get really nasty really fast without it. Okay, so I'm going to use my heat gun and take the temperature and actually it looks like I don't really have to wait which is great we're currently at 118 degrees Fahrenheit and the reason why you have to check the temperature is because phenonip does not do very well above 145 so you want your mixture to be below 145 degrees before you add it to make sure that it remains as effective as possible. So now is the time to add Phenonip. And I'm only gonna need 0.1 ounces of this stuff. So very, very little. So let's go on and add. Now 
And this is a milliliter dropper, so one full dropper is not going to be enough. There we are, we're at 1.1 ounces. And we also get to add our wonderful fragrance oil. You can use whatever skin safe, oh, whatever skin safe fragrance oil that you like. This smells so very good. Okay, so there is the fragrance oil. And this actually has a really high vanillin content. I know that would discolor in a cold process soap, but I don't know what it's going to do to this. Haven't the faintest. So I'm just going to stir this in by hand really well because we only have one step left as far as making this scrub. That is adding the sugar. And then all that's left is to pour it into our little containers after I sterilize them. And oh my goodness, does this smell amazing. Oh my gosh, this is putting me in the fall mood so hardcore and that is so not good for me because it is still August. It is not even September and we don't even really get real fall weather until October most of the time. So this is going to be a tough one for me. All right. So that's all good and mixed in there. Look at that texture. Is that not so creamy and luxurious looking? Mm. I love it. Okay, so I don't need my, actually, yes, I do. I want to get ahead of myself. Come on now, man. Okay, so now it's time to add our sugar. <laughs> sugar time. So, let me pop this open. This is brand new unused sugar. I'm going to need 21 to 28 ounces of this, or you can add more, or you can add less. It's really up to you. I'm going to start with 21 ounces and see what that texture is like. Now you can see why I needed the big bowl. Twenty-one ounces might get me done. All right, there is twenty-one ounces. And I'm not going to need my scale anymore. I can eyeball it from here. Let's turn that off so we don't run the battery down. And now we're just going to mix this all in together. So that's the texture we got. It's very thick. I mean, it's not even coming off the spoon. <laughs> but I think I might want to add a little bit more sugar. This is a great texture. I could stop here. But why not? Let's make it just a tiny bit more scrubby because she did want this to be a scrub, even though this will function as a soap and a lotion as well as a scrub. I want to make sure that that scrubbiness really comes across so that she gets what she wanted. All right, that's a little bit more grainy. 
not quite as smooth. So I think, I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm going to sterilize all of my little containers and get those out. And we will start spooning in our sugar scrub. All right, so here we are. Here is all of the little containers that I'm going to fill up. Actually, I'm missing one. Forgot all about it. I'm supposed to have 12. There we go. I've got it zoomed in just a little bit so that I thought that that would help you all to see a little bit easier as I fill these up. I could be wrong, hopefully I'm not, but I am going to go ahead and spoon or start spooning this stuff in. It is very thick. I mean, you put it on the spatula and it don't go nowhere. So this is probably gonna get a little bit messy, but we'll see how it goes.
All right. So that is all 12 <laughs> little sugar scrubs. I do have quite a bit left over, but first I want to see how much these weigh. Okay, so all of these weigh at least a very minimum of three ounces. Some of them are a little bit over and that is fine. And the container by itself with just the little insert, the little seal on the inside and the lid weigh 0.6 ounces. So all of these have at least 2.4 ounces of product in them. That is great because these jars have a two ounce capacity so they can actually hold a little bit more. So all that is left now is I will need to clean the outside, make sure there's no residue so that the labels will stick. So here is all of that stuff that I have left. Doesn't look like a whole lot until I pick up the spatula and you can see how much is on that. I have an empty bell jar that I have washed and sterilized. This is a four ounce bell jar from Brambleberry. I used this for the face mask that I made. And what I'm going to do is scoop as much of this as I can out and use it for myself because this stuff you guys it smells amazing if you like pumpkin pumpkin spice just if you like that sort of smell I highly 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 recommend that you get that fragrance oil from Brambleberry oh I just slashed, slashed some all over the table but that's okay i can show you all the the consistency you see that that's great so i'm actually going to demo that for myself i'm just going to smear a little bit on the back of my hand so that i can go and play with it in a few minutes so anyway if you like the smell of pumpkin or pumpkin spice anything like that get you that pumpkin spice fragrance oil from Brambleberry. I don't know if they carry it year round. I don't think that they do actually. So if you want it, you better get some now. I highly recommend it. It is magical. See how thick this is? It's crazy. Now, since this is for personal use, this stuff I'm scraping off here, I'm not wearing gloves because it's for me. So, and I know that my hands are clean and, and all that, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to clean the container before I close it up. Clean the edges, I mean. Make sure there's no product around the rim. Wow, I had almost four ounces of this left over. But actually, I'm not complaining about that because that means I get some too. <laughs> I very rarely get to use my own products unless I make a batch, especially for myself. 
so that is always a nice treat when I get to have a little sliver or some leftover soap in my little owl mold or anything like that. It's always an extra treat for me to have those because I don't get to use my own products that much. So I'm just going to scrape this last little bit off the spoon so I can try to not waste. I'm just gonna smooth this out. It is very thick and I can tell that this is going to do a great job at exfoliating because it is when I say scrubby, I don't mean in a bad way. It's not a bad scrubby. It's definitely exfoliating. It feels like very, very fine sugar or sand. If you've ever been around sand, like from a beach, you'll know what this feels like. It's actually even a little bit more fine than beach sand, I would say. It's been a while since I've been to a beach, y'all. I haven't been around an ocean since 2009 so nine years it's been since I've seen a beach I think I'm gonna have to change that for our vacation this year my husband and I always go on vacation for our anniversary our wedding anniversary it's in October well we usually go somewhere like Gatlinburg or something like that because we both really like Gatlinburg but it would also be nice try something new okay so there is that and there you have it there is the remainder of our sugar scrub okay so that is all that I have for this video if you all enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe tell me what you think about this would you like me to do more things like this would you be interested in seeing that do you think you would want to buy these if you are a buyer let me know what you think down below I'd love to hear it and tell me what your favorite seasonal scent is down in the comments below I'm a sucker for seasonal scents and I just I love them all but pumpkin spice by far is my absolute favorite so I'm super interested to hear what everyone else's favorites are too so yeah that's it I hope you all enjoy the video Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you're not. Turn on them notifications by clicking the little bell icon. It will let you know when I upload so you don't ever miss anything. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.